So welcome in this uh, new episode. So today we're going to talk about the Oxin machine. We are in New Zealand with David. Hello, David. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. Could you present yourself and also uh, Pernod Ricard? Yeah, so my name's David Allen. Uh, I work for Pernod Ricard Winemakers here in New Zealand based in Marlborough. Um, my role is technical and quality manager. But over the last five and a half years, I've been responsible for uh, transformation for viticulture, which is loosely implementing our vineyard of the future vision. And a big part of that was autonomous uh, operations. And so the result of that is what you see behind us, the oxen unit. Uh, so we currently have 19 of these machines. Okay. We have two in Hawke's Bay and we also, the, the, the other 17 are here in, in Marlborough. What is quite special in your, in your experience is that you didn't only buy the machine, you also work with the oxen team to build them and also to make them uh, improve in the last five Absolutely. Years. So this, this has been, like I said, a project that's happened over the last five and a half years. The, the team at Smart Machine initially approached us at the same time we were looking for an autonomous solution. Uh, and we had looked around the world and we hadn't seen anything that uh, ticked all the boxes. You know, we, we weren't seeing a machine that could deliver the tasks that we wanted to do in the vineyard in a way that we wanted to do them. So when the founders of Smart Machine came to us with this concept, um, it was just a really good timing that we were looking for something. They thought the technology was there, that they could build and develop it in New Zealand and deliver it for New Zealand conditions. Um, so we were really excited about that. So from there, the discussion started. And of course, but once we had all of that sorted out, um, we basically embarked on this project. And, and in 2020, we, our first prototype was built and delivered. And from there, another 19 units have been developed. So right now we are in 2024. What can you do with this machine? What do you do in your vineyard with this machine? Yeah, okay, so we have, uh, I think the first thing to say is we can do more than one thing at once. It's so a multitasking Multitasking operation. So that was a big part of ensuring that these could provide a benefit. Um, they mow of the course, grass, like front mounted mower. That. These also convert to mulches, so when we're pruning, which is coming up in the next few weeks yeah. once these leaves drop off and we start moving, re, you know, pruning our vines. A lot of this growth will come and be placed in the middle of the row and we need to mulch that into the ground just to get Do rid of it. you use the same uh, machine for that? Same housing. It's just different, uh, effectively different motors okay. and different flails. In addition to the mowing and mulching, you might see that we've got a couple of tanks here on the side yeah. and there's two more at the back. Um, so we can do weed spraying from this, uh, from this unit and we can do that at the same time we're doing our mowing. Uh, on the side of the machine there's uh, implement arms that can house either defoliators or leaf removers, leaf pluckers, uh, which target this fruit zone. So we're trying to open up this area and get more light where the grapes are growing. And then we also have trimmers which cut the excess growth off here and top this and, and you can see the sort of results of trimming. So right now, uh, do you have any idea of how many hours you have done with uh, each of these machines, more or less? So we, we have a range. Some of them have done, uh, some of the newer ones have done less than 500 hours, but other machines have done uh, two and a half thousand hours plus. So you have a, a big vineyard. How do you organize your operation with such machines? Because you can't drive them on the road right now. With the, with the oxen unit, we try and keep them in the same vineyard as much as possible. So the four that we've got operating here at the moment, they will be here all winter. They won't move to another vineyard. And it's not um, a small uh, plot, right? No, we've got 440 hectares here, yeah. so we'll, we'll keep them busy, that's for sure. Um, but when we do need to move them, even within a big vineyard like that, sometimes we do need to move them and we've got a, a specific trailer for driving them on, moving them to the next spot and unloading them. But like I said, we try and minimize those sorts of moves because we'd much rather they were in a row like this doing some work, not sitting on a trailer. So, I think uh, that's it for, uh, for the global vision. Uh, can we uh, just have a look and a quick tour around the other machine? Absolutely. When do you decided to invest in such technologies? What was your idea in the mind in terms of profitability or productivity? Uh, well, so productivity, 
we certainly needed to be able to achieve the same level of work as we were currently achieving. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we were, we were really looking to be able to free up people to do other tasks in the vineyard that needed to be done. And by automating basic tasks, we could free them up to do that. By being able to have an autonomous machine, like I said, that can run, one person can run four machines. Um, that meant we had opportunity to use sort of the valuable people resource we have somewhere else. And uh, in terms of uh, productivity, do you keep some? Do you keep tracking the the data, uh, for example, in uh, hectares per hour compared to a track? So you do not see as much productivity in the best hour of this machine as the best hour of a tractor uh, with a person in it. So someone can go a bit faster, they can turn a bit quicker, you know. But then they need to go and have lunch and all the rest of it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these machines are a little bit like the tortoise and the hare. So these just steadily work away. You've got four of them under one operator. So it's it's all about slow and steady wins the race. So they don't operate quite as fast as a tractor does in most situations. Some situations they do, like for example, mulching. It's a slow speed task. These will operate at about three kilometers an hour. And that's similar to what the tractors would operate at. You know, I think the limitation with multitasking and maybe going from double to triple tasks with tractors and people is the person becomes the constraint. They need to steer the tractor, they need to control all the implements, and it just becomes too much. And, and I think this is where autonomy and this type of vehicle will always have that advantage moving forward. They can, they don't get overwhelmed, you know. Yeah, and the, the multitasking is key because even though you might not be going quite as fast as a tractor, you're doing two jobs at once, uh, which is, you know, really valuable. And, and reducing the amount of diesel and tractor passes that you're doing in any given year as well so one last question what advice would you give to any uh, wine grower that can be in France in Europe or in the US that think about uh, implementing this kind of technologies on uh, his vineyard oh my advice would be if you are concerned that the technology is not there that uh, maybe it's not ready or anything like that I can say absolutely the technology is ready to be implemented and Again, depending on what your use case is and what, what you're trying to achieve, uh, who your supplier is going to be, um, autonomy is much more of a reality than I think people uh, think. ever expect. Uh, we've had lots of visitors to our vineyards to view these machines who have been you know, pretty, pretty blown away by the fact that you, know, you see them working and you talk about how great that is, the next thing you start talking and then 10 minutes later you realise that they've just been going mm. round and round and actually you've got bored of watching them because it's not that exciting. Mm -hmm. but, um, and if uh, they still don't trust that it's working, they can come here and watch the machine working. Uh, absolutely, and I've yeah. seen it and uh, yeah, it's working definitely. Yeah, so no, it's a, absolutely a fantastic opportunity to um, look at how you can get more out of uh, your, your, particularly your people resource, you know. Um, you, they don't all need to be tied up in, in, on a tractor seat all of the time and, and don't get me wrong we've still got plenty of tractors we still have plenty of tractor drivers it's a it's supplementing that fleet and, and providing another way of getting things done that's adding value yeah thank you very much uh, David I think uh, we ask you I ask you all the question uh, I had on this machine yeah. Thank you for hosting us, hosting uh, Future Farming, and uh, no we will uh, definitely uh, see each other in, on another episode and somewhere else, and probably with another robot. Thank you. Thank you.